this signal. Good guys. Well, I guess we're good. Just need some pictures and we're in action. There we go. Well, welcome everyone to the Dimas Las Vegas Open. Being held at the CSI Arena at the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada, bringing you this tournament live. Uh, I'm joined in the booth by Jim White. And this is George Teja. What a match we have. Yell and all Asian affair, George. Both players look up to Efren Reyes as their favorite player. You have Roberto Gomez and Kevin Chang. Yeah, no surprises. I think just about every young player coming out of the Philippines and Chinese Taipei, mm -hmm. China, they all remember Efren laying the groundwork for all these good young players come over to America. Oh, is that, uh, is that uh, Efren Reyes or Cesar, Cesar Morales? <laughs> <laughs> Depends who you ask. <laughs> That's right. Long time ago. But he made one, one heck of an impact on, on, on the U.S. in the pool world. Sponsors are Predator, Q Sports International, Diamond Billiard Products, Kamui, Omega Billiards. This is being played on a 9-foot diamond table with Predator XK2 cloth, Predator Arcos balls. Uh, they have the bridges and the triangle rack and uh, uh, be sure, well you're already here if you were at World 10 Ball Championships. Uh, this will be coming up the 22nd to the 26th. We are underway. This is a race to seven. Alternate break format, rack your own. There's a three-point rule which, and there's all ball fouls. We're playing under WPA rules. And um, break underway. Roberto pocketed a ball, but does not have a aggressive shot on, this, on the one ball. Or does he have anything, Jim? No, it doesn't look like it. He's even pushing out here. Just trying to leave a little bit more of that one for Kevin. Not much more. Ah. Uh. It's enough to kick to the corner and maybe bring the cue ball down below. But will he take it on or will he let Roberto go with it? Yeah, these shots are always tough. You're not sure what your opponent had in mind when he pushed. Right. Looks like he's going to kick at this. We'd like to stick that cue ball right behind the six. Well, he caught it too thin and, and he's going he's to leave it. He's going to pay the price. I, I, I thought that's what he might be trying was to bring that cue ball down below the 4-9 and keep that up on top, but he hit it too thin, probably trying to make it, but there was no future in making it. This is a chance. The only thing really standing in Roberto's way right now is the fact it's the first game and the nerves are still a little edgy. Yeah. You got to settle in and get a feel for the conditions. Both players spent a little time just knocking the balls around and Again, the speed of the table, new cloth, new balls, everything slides. Hmm. Sure does. But this is just one of those shots that just pocket the ball and roll it, and you should get position on the two ball for the side pocket. But he's not. He's being a little more aggressive with it, it looks like. Because he's, he's digging into it just a hair. No, he's just rolling it. Okay. Executed it. Looking, gotta like his backswing. It's so soft, so controlled, and then he comes forward with the cue stick. Yeah, a lot of the Filipinos, very fluent. I mean, he started when he was, what, nine years old, George? Nine years old, yeah, exactly. I think Kevin said he started at 14. So, uh, been playing pool for 31 years. He's going to be pretty fluid. Come, just come off a couple of big wins. Quick look to see if the five goes by the eight into the top right corner. If it does, he won't have to move the cue ball at all. Just stop it dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes by, it looks like. That's close. Wow, 
went right by. Made it look easy. Well, he's done all the hard work now. Yeah. But this is sometimes when the pressure mounts because when you're expected to get out. That's when the, I, I always call it up jumps the devil if something goes wrong. <laughs> One of my favorite sayings. It just seems that it just gets away from you for no reason. You don't understand, how did I miss that? But these guys, you don't see that from them very often. Just hold your nerve and uh, finish. Well, he's left himself where he can either check the cue ball or go right around the back of the seven. Just mm -hmm. his choice. And he went around. He, is he going to come up? He got on the 50. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he's not too bad. But no, no. I'll wager this isn't where he played the seven. He was trying to hit it around, play the seven to the bottom right. Well, the way that cue ball ran around the bottom of the table, he would have been well, well served to play it in the side pocket. Come, just come off the rail a little bit. But he's in, he's in good shape and good recovery, if so you want to call it that. This is solid. Solid out, yeah. Solid start for Roberto here. Yes. So much for the nerves being a bit frayed. <laughs> <laughs> he looked pretty relaxed when he was practicing, and in our conversation out before the match, he sounded pretty relaxed. Uh, that says a lot right there. And obviously it goes without saying, a race to seven, it's a sprint. So mm -hmm. these early racks are big. Well, that's usually where the mistakes are made. The, it, it's the first, what, what I've heard this said many times by many people, that the hardest racks to win are the first one and the last one. So Kevin will rack the balls. He'll break in number two, one nothing to Roberto Gomez. And George, you've already set the, the lay of the land pretty nicely here. Everybody knows where we are and mm -hmm. what it's all about. You know, for me, the biggest thing coming to Vegas for any big pool event is always the distractions oh, that okay. Las Vegas offers. And for these players to come here and, you know, maintain that focus, get a good night's sleep and eat healthy, it's not easy. You know, they're getting better at it because I've, I've been doing uh, the U.S. Opens for, this will be the fourth year, uh, and... Um, uh, I remember the first time I was up here, you'd hear about this guy having a great night out, this guy having a great night out. And you don't hear about that anymore. I've heard from players. i got to go get some rest. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> Rack number two. Kevin trailing one nothing. Good break. But, and there goes the five ball, right? Uh, three ball into the side pocket. It looked like he was going to break dry for a second. Somewhat similar to Roberto's break in the first. He's got nothing yep. on offer on the one, but a chance to duck here. And He's got places to duck. I see a real good place there between the five and the, is it the seven ball? Because I don't think he can hold the bank on the one if he chooses to shoot it. And like so many of the players now going to the composite shaft. Mm-hmm. Oh, he came all the way down. Look at this nice safety tuck. He's right underneath the nine ball. So well done. And up tight where he says, you know, go ahead and try to jump this. Yeah, you know something? I wouldn't be surprised if Roberto just tries to lock something up here. Maybe rolls the eight into the mm -hmm. five because this is Mission Impossible, this hit. Yeah, this hit looks tough. It looks like he can't hit the rail um, on the side to get the one rail to the one. He can't, uh, it's just, wow, you're he, right. He's got to lock something he's up got, here, no yeah. choice. I mean, this uh, this hit is brutal. Yeah, I mean, it looks tough from the commentary yeah. box. Yeah. Uh, seven, five. The five's, in a, in, the five's not in a real bad place, but it's in a little bit of a tough place. The four's close to it, so you can deal with it if you get on it. Uh, I like your idea of locking up the, the eight ball close to the five. Yeah, just try and make it difficult mm -hmm. for Kevin because... He's going to be coming to the table with the ball in hand. Yeah. I, this is a safety. Put the four ball. Mm. Now, there is a three foul rule in effect. So, um, but, you know, trying to, trying to three foul one of these great players is <laughs> it's the impossible dream. He hasn't done very well, I've got to be honest. Kevin's had a look, and he's having one more look at this four. You know, with the four so close to the five, mm -hmm. I, I like the option better to try and roll the eight into the five. 
because the four and five being so close, one, two, no problem. If he gets on the four nicely, he's got a chance to get on the five. Well, exactly, and look where the two is. If he just pockets the ball and floats the cue ball or moves the cue ball to the same rail, he's on the four. So he's considering all his options right now. There's no shot clock, not yet. It'll be coming, coming into play in the later stages. Mm -hmm. But uh, as it sits right now, you've already mentioned the three foul rule. Don't think he's not considering that because this isn't an easy out. just depends yeah. on exactly where the four is and whether it's come out far enough for him to be able to attack. And this is his break. He certainly does not want to lose on his break in an alternate break format. Yeah, he's playing safe. He's going to try and get the cue ball. Up against the four. Yeah, down yeah. in behind the four yeah. and five again. Yep, he's going to come off the one, put it over by the two ball, hit the bottom rail, and come up right into, put him in, put him in tight again. He is considering, the, he, did he hit it hard enough? Yes, he did. Wow, look how nice that floated in. He tried to push that one in behind the two yeah. to make life even more difficult for Gomez. Yeah. He's got a three rail kick at it. And also, now he might as well take a shot and try and hit it because look at where the one is. He doesn't want to give him ball in hand now. Yeah. <laughs> he will be in more trouble. And that three foul becomes... Imminent. Yeah. Uh, Still a tough hit. It is. It's kind of like a three rail kick to the side pocket from that angle. This beautiful CSI arena here. Oh my. We've I mean, got there's play going on all around us. Shane Van Boning has lost his first match. Hill Hill. Taps the table in acknowledgement of a terrific shot from Gomez there. I missed it. I was looking down here. Darn it. And still left it hard to run out. Will he try to play safe again? No, I think he, he goes for it here. Johan Chua waits in the wings for the winner of this match. Ah. He got a bye in the opening round. Mm-hmm. 106 players, I think, making up this field. And uh, look at this. What a turn of events that was. No kidding. Two great safeties, uh, one good hit. Yeah, for a and guy that had complete hand. control yes, of the rack, all exactly. of a sudden, now it's done an about face on him. And still, the four is the problem ball, assuming it doesn't go certainly goes to the top right corner that Roberto's looking at now. But tall order getting there from the two. Let's see how he handles this. Yeah, Shane lost to, uh, to Wu, 7-6. Some great matches coming up. We'll have another great match for you guys at 4 p.m. It'll be Darren Appleton versus Raymond Farron, and then another match for you at 8.30 this evening. Yeah, he hasn't played that one very well at all. He's dead straight on the two. Oh, so he can't even, he has to follow it up and, and, and come over to the rail? Wow. Yeah, he's got a little smile of saying, this is going to be a tough one. Well, if he doesn't get position on the four ball, he'll have a safety available. He'll be able to go ahead and play safe up against the five with the cue ball. But can he get the cue ball on the rail? Yeah, no matter how long <laughs> he looks at this one, it's, it's not going to change. Yeah, it's a toughie. His options are limited. Yeah, you got to follow it down and risk scratching because he's pretty straight in. Oh, wow, he stuns it over. 
Yeah, it must have had a slight, slight angle we didn't see. Well, this that is a great where shot. Initially, it looked like the four was available, and with it being close to the five, I thought you might have been able to play position to the five. Mm -hmm. See, he's calling for a referee, Kevin is right now. He wants someone to watch this, and I don't blame him. Nope. This is close. Yeah. He could easily just feather, tickle, just come off that seven ball so easy. And our head ref, John Lehman, is going to head down right now. Just oversee this shot. He's fresh from the trip across the pond. He was just over there doing the World Cup. They booted him out. <laughs> I thought he came back in a good mood. <laughs> oh, he shot it and made it. Nice and clean. And that pretty so, much. You know what that tells me? Why didn't Kevin do that? When he had the ball in hand with the one and two wide open, and obviously the four was available, why didn't he play that shot? Um, maybe he just didn't. You know, I don't know that he looked at the four ball if there was room. I thought he was playing. Looked like he, he made it look like he was playing safe all the way. Um, oh, you know, he was. But, I mean, that option was there for him. Mm -hmm. You know, events like this, you don't back into them. you got to put your shoulder to the door. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, he had the first opportunity. Oh, well. And that's perfect, actually, for Gomez now. That's one of the things I, I, I've always said. I, I'd rather I'd rather uh, go down swinging than playing safe. Oops, I was ticking my pin there. Is he going for a, a straight? Is he? No, oh, it goes. goes. It goes. goes okay. Past the nine. I couldn't tell if it went by the nine. It does. And this would be a big one for Gomez. That that uh, that great hit on the one ball. That yeah. great hit on the one ball got him that game. Of course, the great hit and the error by uh, by Kevin missing that one ball and scratching. Well, the first two racks go to the Filipino star Roberto Gomez, two nothing over Kevin Chang. And what's more is he'll break in rack number three. Superman. That's what they call him. Mm -hmm. Breaking number three. Where do we got him? Where'd he go? He's playing with a Cohen Q. Eddie Cohen out of Cal Southern California. Also sponsored by Omega. And our folks listening at home on YouTube. I want to welcome all of them. Mm -hmm. Pool fans from all over the world, the chance to catch this action. You know, tell your friends, let them know. Sure. This is as good as it gets. This is how you learn to play this game. You watch these top players and see how they do it. Take a picture of your TV with this on there, and put it, post it on Facebook and say, look what I was watching. There's a good break. There goes one. Oh, he's got a shot at the one, too. Yeah. Yes, he does. Dead into the corner pocket. George, I'm right behind this, and this is dead in. And straight in. For me, these are always a test of queuing. These long, straight balls, you've mm -hmm. just got to deliver that cue straight through the white. And he should have position for that uh, upper, upper left-hand corner pocket as you view your screen. Big shot right here. Yes, it is. He might bring it straight back and play the two in the side. That's what it looks like he's doing. He's, he's digging down. Oh. Eh, it's a little close to your work. Yes, it is. Well, it looks like he's going to come off the deuce behind the nine. Yeah, he's got cover over the mm -hmm. top right corner with the six and the eight there. So he'll try and get behind the nine. Look at that new cloth. Those rails are alive, aren't they? That ball jumped off that rail pretty good. I thought he had him tucked in nicely, but it came out. These new diamond tables, those rails are alive. We're alive. Now, what does Kevin do with this? 
bank it to the corner, try to get out, uh, run the cue ball up for a safety. Can he? Does he see enough of the deuce? He's playing a combo, it looks like, by the way he's aiming. Says these pockets play generous. Let's see if I can't get the six or the eight in there. Yeah, he'll be going at the eight here. Yeah, I think so. And uh, no prizes for guessing this one's missable. Oh. <laughs> and what's more is it's fraught with danger. Should he miss the eight here? Good chance he's going to leave the two. Yes. Definitely agree with that. Wow. I don't think he's going to hit this soft. Yeah, he did. And there, there it is. Wow. He can now go down 3-0. Now, do you see a little bit of inconsistency in Kevin's game there? Here's well, a man that played safe when he had a chance to win the last rack and took on a very low percentage shot there. Mm -hmm. Wonder what would, um, you know, uh, I did it again. <laughs> Pen out of my hand. <laughs> Is he going to try to avoid the three altogether? He did. Wow. I didn't think he could. I thought he'd just be best served, just roll up to it and let it double kiss over to the left and be straight in. Instead, he drew it over, got himself a nice angle. Come around two rails for that, or is he going to just use one? Probably just one. Yep. Uh, oh, for Mr. Chang. Yeah, you'll be watching this at home, <laughs> and you'll think these pockets are pretty generous. They'll they'll tighten up as the week goes on. Yes. With the new cloth, I can promise you diamond tables are far from easy. But they are the choice of the champions. Speaking of diamond tables, I believe uh, one of Kevin's sponsors is Razon. Did I say that right? Or Murray Tips and Muchi, along with Outsville Incorporated. And speaking of Outsville, <laughs> um, looks like Roberto did just that. Three nothing. Three zero in it's this first round match. It's all one-way traffic match. here, George, and Gomez capitalizing on the inconsistencies from. Well, for me, from some uh, inconsistencies from Kevin's game. I mean, Kevin's Kevin, game. a former U.S. Open champion, he's got all the tools. We know that. Oh yeah. He just won the WPA championship too, in 2019. So. No stranger to the winner's circle. That's for darn sure. I mean, I. If I'm not mistaken, uh, some people call him one of the best players in the world, if not the best. Have I heard that here and there? Well, he's going to have to. He's going to have to dig deep now. <laughs> Three yeah. nothing with the alternating break format. Comebacks not easy to overhaul, so he's going to have to keep Gomez in his sights. Good break here. We'll put him in good stead, but he's got to start knocking these in. There goes the four, there goes just the four, and he made two balls. Four ball and the eight ball. Yeah, and you, uh, you already mentioned about the three-point rule. Every ball pocketed, three balls have to pass the head string. Every ball pocketed counts as a ball having passed the head string. And he's queuing over the six here. <laughs> It's funny how, how sometimes when you make those mental errors, if you want to call them that, or inconsistencies, uh, sometimes the table says, well, uh, if you think you're confused now, guess what I'm going to do to yeah, you? The balls remember. The balls remember, yeah. Yeah, he's looking at a, at a shot here where he's going to try and billiard the two into the corner. That's what he's eyeing up. Well, that's tricky. Yeah. And the problem for me is even if he gets it, he's going to get shaped to the one. 
So I don't know about this. Let's assume that he he does attempt what he's been lining up. Well, it looks like what he's lining up is is probably the two ball, but he's also at the same time he could be a two way shot and make one or the other. If he cuts it real thin, he has a shot at the one because he has to cut it thin to hit the two ball just right. Could make them both on the same shot. And as is the case for the most part, made neither one. It's funny when and you go for shots. And we'll like never that. know which one he was actually targeting. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, he hit that one ball pretty thick. Pretty thick. And Roberto comes to an open table. Nothing on the rail, nothing uh, tied up. His first shot will probably be the hardest shot. And for this level of play, it's not quite what you would call a real hard shot. But it's not a real easy one either. He's going to hit it firm, looks like. He looks like he's gearing up to draw this ball and, and hit it a little firm. Yeah. Come right over. Uh-oh, trouble. He's okay. And that shot has laid the foundation now. From the three to the five next. Assuming he gets this two. So George, what are you thinking if you're Kevin Chang sat in his chair and it looks like you're gonna be four racks down? I'm thinking that if I come to the table, I gotta make the best of it. I can't afford any misses and actually you're kind of saying, I have nothing to lose. Go for what I need to. Don't, uh, you know, don't play safe. Don't just do what I do. Because you know he's depending on Roberto breaking dry or making a mistake so he can win some of those racks back. Because if he keeps playing like this on his break, uh, he's going to get, what, two two extra breaks because of the 4-0 uh, score. So that's big. Two or three extra breaks because he started breaking, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. He'll be breaking this two to go up ahead 5-0. The danger here, and it's already been exposed, is the fact that Roberto can, I don't want to say relax. Here's probably where you want to get, think, you know, bear down the hardest. But he's more at ease. And he already looks like he's very at ease. Yeah, he's into the comfort zone now. Yes, he Four is. nothing. Gomez in front of Chang. And he'll be breaking in rack number five. Something yeah. very unique there I uh, I saw from Gomez. If you'll note that he played that shot with the rake with his left hand. He's right handed, but uh, used his left hand to play that shot on the eight with the with the bridge. I did not notice that. I, I, I just didn't. See the odd player do that, but um, very rarely do you see a right-handed player use his left hand mm -hmm. using the bridge. It's, uh, I've seen left-handed players use their right hand with the bridge, which just kind of tells me they're not true left-handers. <laughs> uh, I saw I've seen something this year that I, I hadn't seen before, and I've seen a world-class player convert from right hand to left hand and do it very successfully. He's, he's one of your countrymen. He's one of our guys. That's yeah, right. Yeah, one Johnny of your Mora. guys. Yep. He's here this week. A wing ball down. Plenty past the head string. He needs that one to sit pretty. And the two ball to get out of the way. Or not out of the way, but out of his out of his way. For no, it's, George, it's in the way. You were right the first time. <laughs> uh yeah, this is uh, this is the definition of ugly right here. Oh, these are the shots that are just. I mean, you got to just put that cue way up on top of the elevate, and then just drop it on the top of that ball. And it's just oh, so hard to do successfully. You know, and you can see the one, two, three, four all in the open. Five was mm -hmm. made off the break, and look at the six nine bottom left. So. Yeah. These four colors on the right-hand side of the table, oh, they're, the, they're the key to this rack. Yeah. Problem with this shot, even if he executes it, the cue ball more than likely floats behind the four. 
and you won't have a shot on the deuce. Yeah, that's such a tough shot. Ouch. Well, here's an opportunity for Kevin. It's been a rare one. Yep. This is kind of similar to the shot he missed to begin with in uh, that rack where he was playing safe. And, and uh, Gomez made that great kick. It was further out away from the pocket, but... Uh, so he's got nice alignment. Look at his back mm -hmm. elbow, right in line with his cue. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's textbook. Well, that's what they taught a 14-year-old, and he still uses it to this day. Seventeen years later, still a textbook stance. <laughs> His right eye is right over the ball, too. You know, that's something Something I, 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 I don't see too often anymore is I see a lot of right-handed players with their left eye over the stick, uh, or some in the middle. But he's, he's, he's all the way right over it. Nice alignment. The only thing that moved there was the elbow. Was that forearm just being a pendulum. So he's already ascertained exactly where he wants to leave the cue ball for the 6-9 combination. Just the middle of the table will do nicely. Now we're going to see Kevin slide his first bead over. A late one in coming, but you got to start somewhere. And he does, a 6-9. Affording Kevin his first rack win here. It took five. He still trails 4-1. He'll break in the next, so that helps him. Chance but to try and get a little momentum. He's got to build that. But, you know, with this alternate break format, look how quick he can get what looks well. It can be 4-2 at the end of this rack without Roberto coming to the table. But then he's breaking, so, you know, it's just so hard to get it back real fast. Can't get up there and put a three-pack on him. The See, first match that we aired here from the CSI Arena. Oh. Niels Fine knocked the nine in off the break. Hill Hill. Yeah, what do they call that? The golden break golden in the Moscone break? Cup? The golden break. You know, it happened so fast I didn't even see which pocket it went in. I looked at uh, uh, something on the desk here and looked up and they were shaking hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kevin wouldn't mind seeing a golden break right here. Oh, no, he wouldn't. Didn't even move. Came down just about just a hair. And the eight ball gets in his way. He does not have an open shot on the one. Well, I wasn't sure until I saw his body language on that uh, turn of the head. That kind of confirmed what you, what you said, George. Oh, as I look at the screen, though, it looks like he might be able to see it. He's skewing like he can see it. I think he can see it. I don't think he can see enough to make it. Yeah. Don't know whether he jumps very well or not, but um, he's got the jump cue over there, laying next to his break, uh, next to his break cue. So Kevin plays with the Muchi, the cabin fever shaft. Joshua Filler, there's our world champion in attendance. Yeah, happy to be here, checking out the lay of the land, mm -hmm. Josh. Yeah, you can only see the right side of it. He's giving up a shot. He's not happy. So now we see his tail when he's not happy. He scratches the back of his right ear. As for Roberto, oh, look how nice this lays. Stun the ball over by the five, and everything falls in place. 
Yeah, Joshua Fellows, are, uh, he's a world champion. He's also a reigning U.S. Open champion. He just recently won the U.S. Open here in Las Vegas. Yeah. Just down the street at the Mandalay Bay. Mm -hmm. So he's, uh, he's got fond memories of this city. You know, this year uh, we've had some great tournaments up here in Vegas. In fact, quite the, that U.S. Open, the three... Uh, I mean, the yeah, U.S. Open nine ball, and then the three U.S. Open bank pools, straight pool, and uh, one pocket. Uh, now, this, this tournament, and especially with the Predator World 10 ball coming up, wow, what more do we need in Vegas? A couple of U.S. Opens in August. The 10 ball and the 8 ball. City of Entertainment. <laughs> oh, boy. We're getting our fill. There's going to be players... Pro players. I wouldn't want to come to Vegas and thinking I was uh, uh, I could play pool right now. I really wouldn't. <laughs> let's go. Let's go play pool in Vegas. They got a lot of action up there. Well, right now you're going to get more action than you can handle. You've got just about 95 percent of the top players and 98 percent of the top players in the world. <laughs> you know what? A lot of people are going to be looking to uh, to base themselves here with the amount of action that's happening in the city. If it was like this every year, I could see that yeah. very easily. Bodes Gosh. very well, doesn't it, yeah. for the future of pool sure in does. America? And now with with live streams coming up like this one, for instance, uh, being free, um, you get a lot of that. Just extended his cue so he can reach it. It's a pretty handy little implement. Uh, I guess being extended that way made that the best way to play it. I, I thought maybe you could play a little a little more aggressive and try to put the cue ball up against, uh, is it the, the two ball that's by the nine there? Yeah, two by the nine, yeah. and uh, he's left an opening just between yeah. the two and the seven here. Tough shot. And table time has really been at a premium for Kevin in this match. Oh, my. So this would do his confidence the world of good if he could knock this one in. Get on that too nicely. Well, he's got a window. Is it big enough to see the right side of the ball so he can shoot it in the corner? Looks like it. There's a good shot of Roberto studying things out, saying, boy, if I can get this game, I'm really in business. And uh, he can control his old dest own destiny here. But which way do you do it? Can't be aggressive. I don't see him making a ball. I see him looking for a save, but where do you go? The five ball keeps you from, you just roll it behind the nine? Or do you play the nine, being up four to one? That's pretty reckless, but it would pay dividends. Yeah, he just looked at that. <laughs> Oh, he's looking to play it off the nine into the corner and maybe hold the cue ball. Can you hit it that soft with that with, with, with that kind of control? Because more than likely, if he hits the nine ball thick, he splits the nine and the two so they open up and he won't have any cover. And to hold the one ball in front of that pocket, what's he thinking? And he's got to be thinking safe here. Yeah. Well, see, to me, safe would be behind a 2-9, but I can't get there. You know, you just can't get there with the cue ball, with the way they lay. So it looks like he's looking to get the one ball between the 2-9. Now it looks like he's going to be firing at the 9. Don't know. Yeah. Looks like he gave it a go. And luckily for Kevin, he's he's now in charge. Now things can, this match can turn around right here. This is probably the best opportunities, oh. or opportunity that Kevin has had to mm. get that back arm oiled and everything's in the open now. Just try and keep that cue ball under wraps, but.
He still seems like he's a little uncomfortable, doesn't he? He's just taking, uh, he just wants to make sure. You'd hate to make a mistake at this, you know, at an opportunity like this, because this can get you right, right back in the match. You're 4 2 and breaking. And so before that man right there, you see on your screen comes to the table, uh, it could be 4 3. Will this be Superman's? Um, I forgot his uh, his uh, what hurts Superman? Kryptonite. Kryptonite. Oh wow! <laughs> I set. I thought I set that up well, and I forgot you Kryptonite, right. folks. Yeah, that's all right. You set it up <laughs> nice. Uh, This is looking. That elbow looks a little oilier. Not quite as stiff. And it looks a little more confident. He's sped up. He has a long, uh, he goes a long way when he backs, uh, on his backswing. He has a long backswing. Just looking for that. Well, he'd be a lot more content with proceedings as of late. He's won the last two racks, Kevin, and 4-2 now to Gomez, but it's Gomez with the break in rack number seven. And as we said, it's a race to seven. So Gomez still pretty much in control, control here. He just needs to hold serve. And I was incorrect when I, I thought Kevin was breaking and I thought this could be 4-3 with, without uh, Roberto coming to the table. And the I one going on the spot. So players obviously just trying to give themselves a solid rack as you'd expect. You want those first four, that, the diamond shaped balls, the one and the two behind it and then the nine ball all kissing. This is a good solid rack. What time's this place close? <laughs> he's taking he's probably taking the longest to rack these balls that we've seen so far uh, now they're not allowed to touch the one ball they, they don't want to be feathering the one ball at all but I guess you can't get those the back of that rack tight yeah yeah he looks like they're moving around on him yeah so what do you do from here? Rack them a little higher. How high are they allowed to go on the spot? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't know whether Kevin is even allowed to come and check the rack if he, he feels like not. it's too high. He is not. Because he's pretty high on the spot now. If I look at where the diamonds are, oh, the right. middle diamonds. Yeah. Oh, gosh. There's that overhead view. Well, these are brand new balls, brand new table, brand new cloth, and uh, brand new rack. And he had a little trouble racking them. Yes, he did. You know, I do a lot of uh, commentary. I have in the past with a very good friend of mine, Danny DiLiberto. You know him pretty well, I, too. And he, do. Uh, he is not a proponent of the balls being touching. He says, just get down and break. Mm-hmm. We've discussed it a few times in uh, in past events where we've been sat together, and he would have had something to say about that, no <laughs> doubt. <laughs> I like the way he says it, too. <laughs> All right, well, number seven. Ball down. Shot on the one. Yeah, this looks pretty useful. 
This is a chance. Again, one good shot on the one. If he drops onto the two nicely, well, this table will be at his mercy. You think you think he's risking a shot? Uh, no, it did take quite a stroke to put it over there. I was going to say risking a, the cue ball going in the side pocket on the left. Because he wants to go over to that side, I would think. The way the balls lay, it'd be natural. Not behind the six. Hello. Well, you're right. Yeah, it was. He was taking the cue ball over there. Now he's had to go for his jump cue. Just the, the, the one didn't really go into the, the throat of the pocket, did it? And I think had it, no. it would have dropped onto the two better. But I thought he was going to hit that with just a little more draw, but I can see his hesitation in doing so because if he catches the left side of the six, uh, he could scratch. But to get the one ball all the way over there so fast was tough. But did he go to the rail and out? It, no, it slid right behind the six. It, it never touched the rail. This is a toughie. He's jumping half a ball. Doesn't worry about position for the three. It just lays in front of the pocket. Just has to make this. He didn't. And he's gotten a good roll here with the cue ball and the, um, the two ball where it ended up. He's got a simple kick between the three and the nine to get back at the two. Or does he choose a jump shot? Simple kick. Yeah, he can count himself pretty fortunate there. From a bad positional shot mm -hmm. to this. One of the intangibles in pool. How things will just happen and uh, good fortune was involved. There goes part of the jump stick. <laughs> <laughs> He's putting the the back part of his jump stick on the on the chair and started to roll off. So he stopped over and picked it up and uh, prevented it from falling. Now for the jump shot. It's going to be in the air for a while. Well, it is nine ball, so. It is nine ball. <laughs> well, Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Yeah, well, he gave us there. He, but yeah, he, he fluked the five, but... Uh, hello, get, seven ball? Yeah, this is a much easier kick than the last one. Oh, yeah. This is a nice, This is actually a good kick. He can kick this... Uh, he can kick and stick it and, I'll, and put the two ball down by the, by the nine ball, which is dangerous because if you can see it, uh, you have a billiard on the nine. This looks just kind of studies the shot, doesn't he? He stands he back, does. crosses his arms, and weighs everything up before he decides what to do. Yeah. One thing about that is um, shows commitment. You know, once he, he does make up his mind, you know, that he's 100% committed to that. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, is a sign of a very good player. Oh, it looks like he's cutting it thin. Or he's, I can't tell what he's doing. Can he, oh, he's two rail kicking it. He went the other way. Yeah, he tried to be too, too cute there, too yeah. precise. He was looking for a thin hit on the two. He was looking to make it. Off the two cushions. That was looks an easy like hit, but. Uh, well. That could cost him the rack and should. Yep, sure should. I thought just kicking the head rail and kicking the two ball down by the nine. Uh, well, that would have been the conventional way. Out. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm kind of conventional kind of guy, especially when I can control the cue ball, and it's just going to be a stick there. So, uh, this is kind of conventional too. Thank you. 
Oh, he's pretty straight. I thought he was going to have to come down and come back again, but no, he was pretty straight. He kind of took it back and decelerated through the cue ball to hold the pace. He does that. He does that, uh, uh, he does that a lot. Watch his stroke here, how he'll take the cue back real soft and then, and then come up. See that? Kind of hesitates at the top of the backswing and then comes through. I've seen him do that for some time. Sometimes it's really pronounced. And he'll just make quick work of this. Oh, maybe. Whoa, so much for quick work of this. Uh, you had to have taken his eye off that. It looked um, like his stroke. Uh, uh, he. I think I think everything moved. I'd like to see a replay on that. I think everything moved. Yeah, it looked like he jumped off, off the queue and uh, mm -hmm. got a bit anxious. But, I mean, this isn't easy. No. Well, well making the ball is one thing. Getting back on the nine ball is another. He's pretty much straight in. Uh, can't go forward. He's against the rail. Can't come back. Can't cut it in the side. Tell you what, if Kevin can get out from here, mark that miss down oh, on your yeah. score cards. Wow, this is tough. Yeah, he's looking to try and smash this in with a lot of follow, force follow and get off two cushions and get as close to the middle of the table as he can. Oh, I this think, is tough. I think I try to make this ball and then just bank the nine in the same pocket. Yeah, that's that's asking a lot. He's too straight to come bring get get position. Wow. But you feel like you got to do something. You but he wishes he'd have taken your advice, George. <laughs> now I tell you that uh, I just didn't see anything else to do but that successfully. I've fired a shots like that many times with that same result because you couldn't expect much more. Well, Roberto appreciates it, and he'll take game number six, number seven, excuse me, for a five to two lead. Yeah, a couple, couple bad mistakes in that rack, and he survives wow. to claim it. 5-2, as you said, but the bad positional shot after he made the one, didn't get on the two, and then a glaring mistake on the miss on the eight. And he goes back to his chair, just looking at him. I'll tell you what, he's far from, far from a convincing winner in that rack. No, he's sitting there going, whew, got away with that a couple times. And look how quick Kevin puts the rack together. Yeah. You think a little disgust in that one as well? Oh yes, I saw that as as he as he kind of bent down there. This face facial expression was like, oh man, what am I doing? What's happening here? Well, he's got to keep it right. Not always easy, but you got to stay positive. Oh, ooh, look at this nine ball. Made a ball on the break. Yeah, look at the bank. One onto the nine. Yes, hello. I would be shooting that. At this point, a oh. quick win. Yeah, guaranteed he's shooting yeah. it. Oh, yep. This could easily become one of my favorite shots in nine ball. <laughs> but it's not a gimme. Guarantee you that. Will it be for Kevin? Look at this. Clean. Clean Dead as a whistle. Center of the Dead pocket. Center. Wow. Well, that's Great how you, shot. That's how you erase the memories of the last one in a hurry. Those are those. That shot there is like a shot in golf. You know those great shots that keep you coming back after you've made, after you've duffed it four times or three times, and then you make a great shot. Those are the ones that keep you coming back. Yeah, that brings the score to five three. And Gomez, he'll try and put that triangle to quicker work this time. Hopefully, especially seeing how uh, Kevin just. Put him up there in one swing. 
but you see, he, he's watching them come apart right as he racks them. So um, it's got to be in. Now move the rack off the balls. Nope, not happy with that, huh? He has taken longer racking than anyone else we've had so far. He's had more time at the table racking the balls than Kevin has <laughs> shooting. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, 5-3. Yes. You know, you look, you look back at a couple shots, and, um, like, this match could be a lot closer. I mean, this is a big rack, this next one. If Kevin gets back to 5-4 and breaking in rack number sure. 10. Yeah, he, uh, this is a very important rack, uh, rack for, uh, for Gomez to kind of put it away. If he seals the deal here, he kind of pretty much is in the driver's seat. You never put a rack away till you make that last nine ball, but he's in the driver's seat. Again, reminding everyone watching, you know, let everybody know this is the best place to watch world-class pool this week. You have four days of the Diamond Las Vegas Open, and then on the 22nd through the 26th, we have the Predator World 10 Ball. Yeah, the jewel in the crown, really. Yes, really. World 10 Ball Championship. Been sponsored by Predator this year, and uh, again, we'll, we'll reset everything here in the arena, the CSI arena, and gear down mm -hmm. for a world title event. Yeah. This event here is $25,000 added. It's $17,000 for first place. Um, I think second place is uh, 10000 Yep, and third is six. So we got some monies available this week. And uh, the 22nd to the 26th, it's $100,000 added. Four times as much, 30000 is first place. So these players, you know, you hear all these complaints about there's no money in pool, there's no money in pool. Well, guess what? There's $47,000 available in eight days. And you think we'll see a double winner? Wow. That's, that, that's actually a very... Uh, I'm going to say no because of the field. This field is probably so well balanced. You've got the Chinese Taipei, you've got the, the Chinese, you've got some Japanese players, you've got, heck, the whole Filipino contingents here. Um, you've got American players, but uh, our favorite, uh, Shane Van Boney, has already taken a loss. He's on the one loss side. Don't count him out, though, but he's on the one loss side. Uh, this is a race of seven. So uh, you've got Albin Ocean here, you've got uh, Niels Fyan here. I mean, Name Josh a player. Filler. Josh, Josh Filler. Josh Filler. Yeah, exactly. See, I don't use his name a lot because uh, I'm not that familiar with him. I've just seen you, him on the Muscogee Cup. This week. I will be. <laughs> but um, he's an excited, excitable player. Exciting and excitable player. Well, that was a shot attempted by Roberto there. He tried to make the one off the two. Cushion first off the two. And here's a gilt edged opportunity now. For Kevin Chang. Everything's in the open. Mm hmm And here's that, you know, like you just pointed out, here we, we could be four or five. He just completes this run out here. Pretty much the three to the four. And then the five and then the six nine combo. Will he go for the combo or will he go for the run out? I think the way the five and six lays, uh, we'll see. What do you think? Yeah, I'll let you know when he's shooting the five. <laughs> exactly. Because all he really has to do is shoot, uh, once he shoots the five, if he's in that area where he is now, is get off the rail and stay close to the six. But those are still missable. So he, you know. Uh, there's a lot of distance between that six and nine. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. And the thing about it is, whoa, the thing about it is, 
give yourself an angle, float to the top part of the table right now the way as, as you look at it, and you're straight in, and the eight ball's easy. Kevin pretty straight on this four, oh boy. so his positional options are limited. Coming straight back to where his hand is. Whoa, he went up and high, so he's gonna, he's going for the run. Now he may have to play the, oh, yeah, the going six back now. He's got the angle, just depends on the speed that he plays this. May have to go across the table twice and play the six nine here, George. <laughs> He's thinking about it. He's, he might be considering going three times across and playing the six by itself in the opposite corner. Because he can strike it with a real good speed and end up in pretty good shape. Or if he floats it in, pocket speed, and holds for the six to the same pocket. Yeah, there aren't too many players to play that pocket speed. That's that a shot. tough cut. What a shot. What a shot, yeah. Nice shot. Yeah, that could easily have gone wrong. And right now for me, even though he's still training by one rack, the guy at the table might have just become the favorite. He's won four of the last five racks. He's still trailing 5-4, but he'll break in the next. The former U.S. Open champion starting to flex his muscle a little bit. Mm -hmm. Current WPA champion. And Mr. Gomez wondering, hmm, I wonder how hard he's thinking about that eight ball that he missed. Oh, but he still won that game, so it can't hurt him too much. Didn't he just, didn't he, he did win that game. Left that long straight in eight, eight ball. Well, a good break right now. This is exactly what the doctor ordered for Kevin. Nine ball. Nope. Well. It's not bad. Not bad. We can look into the two six. Got to keep the cue ball in the open for the two. And not, even if he gets behind a three, you probably have a shot rail first or something. So. But he's, he's got quite an angle on this two ball to make the six. Do you run into the seven? Well, if I was, if I was at the table, I'd check it to try and run into the ball just above the two, hold the eight. Well, I'd try mm -hmm. and run into the eight, okay. check it and run into the eight. But he may spin it around and try and hit that seven. Uh, he no, ran into, he the went eight. into the eight. And look at this. This worked oh. out nicely. Tell you what, did it ever? Yeah. Well, it, it took the eight out of the equation, and that was going to be a problem ball for sure. Yeah. He looks a different player now, doesn't he? Quicker. Much more assertive. Maybe things don't look as gloomy as they did at 5-3 uh, at or 5-2. Well, he trailed at one point. 4-2? 5-1. One. One. Okay. Wow. It was 4 nothing down. That's right. Match coming up at uh, 4 o'clock will be uh, Darren Appleton versus 
Raymond Faron. And then another match at 8.30, an extreme match, will be Nayuki Ol versus Ping Chung Ko. Talk about an international field. Five of the last six. Oh. And the first 10 racks have been split. And Gomez won the lag. So he'll so break the odd racks. And if it does get to Hill Hill, well, Gomez will have the luxury of knowing he'll break. But there's no prizes for guessing. Sar score right at 5-5? Five, 5-5 five? Five is, five, five is definitely the score, wow. George. And I was going to say no prizes for guessing what side Mr. Momentum is on now. No. There's a trade show component here at the Rio. You see all these companies littered all around the venue. Oh, Case that's companies, right. This Q companies. That's right. This is your first time at the BCAPL. Yeah, I, I did the. I was involved in the BCA championships one other time. I think uh -huh. when I was at the Riviera. I was doing the the Whirlpool Masters, and um, that was the only other time. I had the, uh, the luxury of being around a BCA event, and pretty cool. Well, you know, this is this this is like uh, the mecca for for pool players, especially having all the pros here this week. Uh, these eight days, the uh, the whole time of the BCA PL and the USA PL championships, is the fact that this room, for instance, has all all has Omega Billiards, JB Cases. It's got. Uh, I mean, it's got. Uh, Vendors, vendor, if it, if you want something in pool, this is the place to come right now. Is the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino because it's here. You can find it right here, uh, especially with all the pros here now. Um, and it's this way every year, and this allows all the league players across the country, and actually it's the, around the world that come play because we have players from Australia, from Canada, from Spain. They come out and, and uh, compete and rub elbows with the pros. And the cue ball's gone. Ball in hand, and guess who can get to the hill first? Yeah, I'll tell you why cue ball's gone and <laughs> with three others with it. Yeah. This is, um, yeah, this is completely turned on Roberto Gomez. He's got no one to thank but himself. Well, I must say, sitting as calmly as he is, he's taking it well. But you can, I know I, if I'm in that chair, I'm seething it myself. <laughs> so, different players react differently. Uh oh. Oh, that came out okay. That could have come out a lot worse. Totally misjudged that, though. Yeah. And now position not really straightforward to the seven. The five and six were made on the break. So cue ball's going to have to travel a bit more than he would have liked. And he's playing this into what I call a blind pocket because his line of sight is away from the intended target. And these aren't always easy to judge. No, they're not. And the thing is, he's got to, uh, he's got to come down here. I don't think he, he's got to go two rails with the ball and the cue ball goes towards the eight. So it'll settle for a bank. Uh, he's using inside English to kind of come back at the seven. There you go. Come to the same side instead of going to the opposite side and have himself a nice shot. Good recovery. Yeah, real good recovery. And now he's got the perfect angle to slide the cue ball over for the eight. And he makes it look like it was perfect because he's ditto on this shot. Yeah, he's starting to enjoy himself a little more out there, too. That's four in a row. 
I would too if I was down 4-0 and now on the hill. Yeah, first time in the match he's led. And he'll be breaking for the last time. But 6-5 to Kevin Cheng. After trailing 4-0 and then 5-1, I think it was, wasn't it? Was it 5-1 or did he get to 4-2? I don't recall exactly. It was 4 nothing down. Actually, Kevin won two in a row to get 4-2, then 5-2 okay. it went. Okay, that's where it was. But actually, at 4 nothing down, he wouldn't have given too much for his chances. No. And well, he, was, he was making a lot of mistakes, too. Yeah. Well, they were... Uh, I wouldn't really call them mistakes. They were just not the right decision, maybe. But then Roberto made that outstanding kick on that one ball, a three-rail kick. Now, on the last match, uh, the game was ended right here on this break. The match was ended on this break. Niels Fine broke, broke the nine ball in. And it moved, but not towards the pocket. Well, Gomez is going to get out of his chair. That yeah. much I can guarantee you. Because Kevin's going to be pushing here on the two. Now, where do you push to, Kevin? Down where he's standing? I'm going to push over by the six ball, but that gives him a cut shot. Now, I don't think I want to push by the six ball, but I don't want to push to the opposite corner either. Yeah, I might do that. Push to the right side where he's at now. Uh, leave the corner of the ball available so you can just cut it. The two ball goes into the four and take the cue ball right back up there again. Oh, that's tough. He might play the ball from there. From where Kevin's standing now, if he leaves it on the rail there, he might just say, I got to go. I think if he plays to the right side, Gomez will put him in. He'll just send him back. I think so. He'll yeah, he'll probably get up and have a look at it, a little bit like playing poker, mm -hmm. you know, where you shuffle say your go chips. Ahead. But he'll, uh, well, maybe he won't get out of his chair. I actually like shooting this. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he'll put him back in. Because he really can't go anywhere with the cue ball. Right back where he's at. And the two ball uh, hits the four. <coughs> Leaves him. Yeah, let's see what he does with this. Can he? Well, he must like it. Yeah, it's... He might be cutting this ball and going two rails with the cue ball behind that five ball to where he was looking at. I'd be going straight back where he's at. Yeah, he's going back that way. It's going to leak out. He's going to regret it. It's going to cost yeah. him the match. It was, a brave, it was a brave effort, but it was a tall order. Yeah, I think maybe you you made a good point saying I'd be sending it back and letting him shoot. Yeah, it just it, it just was a lot tougher from sure. that side. But again, you know, easy to say if he'd have locked him up behind the five, then it would have been the right decision. The ends justify the means a lot in pool. <laughs> uh, you're quite right there. Big shot right here for Kevin. But a chance. Oh, good one, too. You know, really, for all purposes, this is the shot of the match right here. He makes this ball, he probably gets out. the cue go too. He can yeah. hit this with a lot of power. Yeah. Just wants to get comfortable with that bridge hand really.
made it, got position. Not real good position because of the four ball. And it interferes with his cueing. Yeah, he's got to elevate here. Yeah. Bridge over that four, try and get that three as far up the table as he can. The four next. He's going to hit it with some pace. Actually, not very much. No, he needed a bit more. George, yeah. you should have listened to you. A little bit more pace than that well, one. Well, I kind of... Uh, when you put more pace on that, it's where you miss it. But this is a nice shot here. He cuts this in. The cue ball comes into the open. For the five in the side, even though it's a tough shot. How, how far off the, the... That looks easy on the screen. It doesn't look so bad on the screen. I don't know what it looks like on the table. <laughs> Well, he's looking at it. It's a very thin cut on the four. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a big, big, real thin cut on the four. He might be better off playing safe. Put the cue ball right where that is. It the seven ball next to the nine? That's the eight ball next to the nine. No, seven, just below the nine, seven. Oh, okay, this nine, seven. He's cutting it. Missed it. He wishes he would listen to you. <laughs> I kind of like that. The, the safety looked good behind because you have the seven to stop you from leaking out. You have the four ball banking over to the right side of the table. And if you, if you get the ball to the seven, you have a safety. Now Gomez has to complete the clearance here. And then we'll have another hill hill. Yes. Two stream matches, both hill hill. How fitting for this field. That was, that was a bit. Was that touch and go? I, I looked away. Yeah, that was a bit dicey, that one, I'll tell you. He almost followed it in. He hit it a little thicker than he wanted to. Oh, boy. This is pretty dicey. Right? This is a long, straight-in shot. To me, these are one of the hardest shots in pool. Yeah, can't afford straight, any mistakes straight either. Yeah. Especially with the, with the nerves raging right about now. Can't afford to miss this ball, he knows it. He didn't. Nice, nice, nice action on that cue ball. Might have been one of the better shots Roberto's yeah. played. Yeah, nice, nice action on that cue ball. Those are such satisfying shots when you stroke through them like that and you, you fall forward. It just you know it takes such a nice stroke to do that for that kind of a result. And this is pretty natural here. Just a hint left. Oh, speaking of natural. Up jumps the devil. Completely unexpected after especially after such a nice shot. Not easy to get shaped out of the seven from here. Yeah. The ball right in the jaws of the pocket like this. Not easy to judge. Wow. Uh, he's done well. He's yes, done he real has. well. Oh, he's Calls conceded. Conceded it. Roberto's wow. had enough. The bleeding stops. And Kevin Chang, a 7 5 winner over Roberto Gomez. Next up. It's going to be Dynamite Darren Appleton and Raymond Ferron. See you guys at 2.30. I'm sorry, 4 p.m. 4 p.m.